So here I am uh, lettering a page for a new project. Uh, this will be coming out through Scout Comics. Um, this is called Infernoct. Uh, it's uh, drawn by Eli Powell. And written by Mina Elwell and colored by Tristan Elwell, uh, presumably related. Um, lettered by me, obviously. Um, I've already lettered the first couple pages. So I want to um, just get to page three script. Here we go. Okay, first thing I do with my lettering template, I want to make sure that the art layer is set to 50% opacity. So I just click this, and you can change this amount, but 50% it works pretty well. And that just makes it easier to see things, um, especially with uh, sort of high contrast art like Eli does. Um, you can see like, you know, like right now I've got this black tail sitting on this black background. And if I had this set to 100%, you start to lose that. And uh, if you have a tail that is hanging out like this somewhere in the artwork, when it's printed, you've, you forgot to delete it. Um, it looks really bad on, it reflects really bad on everybody, the publisher, the, you know, the managing editor, the editor, um, you specifically, uh, you can lose a job over that. So um, it's best to, again, have that set to 50%. And then while you're working, you can see it. And you can actually leave it at 50%. It doesn't affect anything. It doesn't actually change the artwork. It just changes the way it appears on screen. Um, the only time you'd want to change it back is if you need to sample a color for some reason. Um, and I mean, it'll still sample the full color. Like this is the actual color of the grass. Um, but when you're, when you're like, if you're making a sound effect, um, you need to see the, the full range of colors. So, you know, if you want to go lighter or darker, it's really hard to sort of create a sound effect that is appropriate without seeing the full artwork. You know, just as an example, those two blues, uh, they don't look, I mean, they look different, but not terribly different. But you can see how different they actually are. So if you were going to sample one of these blues and you didn't really care which one, um, you might run into a, a problem. Um, your sound effect might look, might stand out too much or might blend in too much. And so if you went and you changed the art back to full opacity, you'd see the sort of difference you had. So anyway. Uh, let's get rolling here. Um, nothing in panel one, a couple things in panel two. So what I've got here are some rough balloons and you can see they're, they're different from each other. Um, you can see the different nodes. So each of those nodes is a little anchor point where things vary a little bit from a standard ellipse. Um, so anyway, what I usually do is I'll drag all three of these out onto the artboard, and I'll just put them in every panel that has sound effect or has dialogue. Uh, looks like not much for a while, and then I guess that's it for this page actually for dialogue. So she says thanks, Joey. By the way, anytime there's a person's name, there's a comma before and after it. Um, common mistake for for people to not do that technically it's the writer or editor's job to catch that um, but be a team player and if you see it change it um, same with words like yeah if this was yeah um, what's her name Sam Sam so if you said yeah Sam have a great day it's yeah comma Sam comma have a great day period um, or yeah comma Sam period have a great day depending on you know your sort of thoughts on sentence structure but anyway so what I'm doing here is just making the balloon fit uh, fit the text and these rough balloons work really well for this kind of artwork um, there are you know and there are lots of ways to do balloons when people are inside cars. Um, on the previous page, um, there's a long shot, and he says a, a 
the word off this way. So I had the tail sort of coming in the window. Um, it didn't cross the barrier of, of the car, but it just pointed towards the window like it was coming in from the side. Um, that helps to, to that helped with the story flow because he was looking to the to the far right, and the thing he was reacting to was to the far right. So it helps to push that to the right. But in this case, this will work fine. Um, if you put it here, you'd have a sort of weird. I don't know. It would just look a little weird to me. Um, and a lot of lettering is about that. It's about what looks good or what looks bad to the letterer. Uh, and, and so you just have to trust your instincts and your experience. And, um, you know, and sometimes people have different opinions. You know, editors might have different opinions, writers, definitely, um, even artists. But, you know, you just have to kind of say, well, this is what I think. And then you have to decide how big of a deal is it? You know, is it worth... Um, sort of standing your ground on, or is it, or is it something that you can let go? <clears throat> so here I've got the tails selected, and these tails I made with a brush. Um, you can see how that works. And actually, it's a brush, but I don't use the brush tool. I use the pen tool, which is this tool here. So um, what you do here, let me delete that. So click, and then click and drag gives you a curve. And then uh, window. Brushes. And then this is the brush, um, or maybe this one, yeah. So you can see it's it's really the same as what I've got over on the side, and then you can just play with these anchor points to give you more or less bend to it. And I call that bend a belly. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll often, when I'm teaching people, I'll often say, hey, give that more belly, and it just means give it more curvature. Um, if you wanted to hand draw each one, you could. I would recommend using the brush tool. Um, it gives you a much more gives you much more control. Well, not control. It gives you a, a faster, easier way to get it done. But then you have to have more control with your hand or with your stylus um, in order to get those strokes to look good. I want to get this this balloon just off this slam effect a little bit. Um, Let's see if I can. Typically, I like my strokes to be overhanded. My uh, my strokes, my tails. Um, I think they're a little more confident that way, and they, and especially in this case, like it tends to echo the the physicality of what she's doing a little better. I think that'll probably work. Um, and then. I'll come back and fix this in a minute, but you want the tail to overlap the balloon a little bit. And this is a, a style that I'm doing with, with this book. Um, but I've got an action here that flattens that. It basically turns the... There's a lot... See, the, the originally, the stroke is a line with this brush applied to it. I have an action that converts that to an object. And then an, a, an action here, or a keyboard shortcut that turns it into an object. And then an action um, that sets all my parameters for me. Um, now I do want this to overlap, but what I'm doing here is I'm sort of I'm clicking here with a node, adding a node to the line, and then deleting it. And that gives me more of like a hand-drawn indie comics feel. Um, I mean that that happened in all comics, but uh, in the in the 80s and 90s, indie comics tended to be a little sloppier, um, and so this is sort of what I'm echoing is that sort of approach. I think that will work for that panel. Um, okay, so let's see. One, two, three. Pull it down just another touch. Four, five. Knock, knock, knock. So one, two, three, four, five. What I'll do is I'll just throw this in here for a minute. Creek in. Six. Nothing in seven. Okay. So with the sound effects for this book, we want to do something somewhat creepy. But I mean, some things are are not cre cre creepy, like uh, knock, knock, knock. You know, it's not. 
it's not a ghost knocking on your bedroom wall or you know the boogeyman trying to knocking on your closet door trying to get out it's it's um, it's just knocking so we have to kind of pick some fonts that um, that work for that sort of thing uh, let's see you know what? There's another one. Uh, I'll shoot. I'm not sure where I went. Anyway. Um, Uh, well, this is the hard part, right? Finding something you like. So I just did view over print preview. So we get some white background here. This is a good creepy horror font, this font family here. So I think we might go with this for the creek. Now we need something just just for the knocks. Okay, so you see here that this first one is capitalized and the rest aren't. Um, and then this font, capitals are larger. So I just have another keyboard shortcut set up to make things either make them caps or make them not caps. There's a little variation in those two. I'm gonna go ahead and go with the caps. I'm going to convert that to outlines and ungroup it. I'm going to go ahead and delete those three for now. I'll take this and I'll apply the tail effect. And then for sound effects, I like to kick that to the outside. And these are ungrouped, so I can go ahead and move these apart a little bit. I'm going to take this and give it a little shear. Hide that selection. And anytime you have repeated sounds like this, I like to make them a little bit different. Um, maybe the first and the third are the same, but the second should have its own little tilt or lilt or something. And I'll come through and I'll grab these two and knock them down, knock that up, knock this down, grab these two and knock them up, just to give a little variation. So I'm going to group those, copy them, paste them in front. And then as far as color selection, I'm going to probably go with something Oh, that's pretty green. Maybe that license plate. And I don't always go with um, colors that are in the art. It really depends on the panel and what you're doing and what you're trying to evoke. Uh, that's probably too much. You know what? This um, yellow down here from this note that's on the stairs, that's pretty good. A little bit light. Let's go ahead and just kick that up. That'll probably work. And then this creek. I'll copy that, put it behind itself, and give it the tail effect. And just for working purposes, I'm going to convert these dot lines and ungroup them. First thing I want to do is give this bounce. Um, that's what I call it when you have some go up and some go down. And it's the easiest way to sort of start to visualize how you want this to be. Um, so let's see, and sometimes, you know, in this case, it's appropriate because it's a horror sound effect, but sometimes writers will just put 75 letters in there and you don't need to put all 75 letters in there. Um, it's, you know, your, your choice as to what's going to actually make it in there. Um, obviously you want to be true to the spirit of what they're saying, but you don't need to be literal. You know, let's pull these two back up a little bit. So I'm scaling these. Um, I might rotate a couple, make them a little bigger, a little smaller. Uh, I'll rotate this one, I think. 
and this this book is definitely a horror book, so you kind of need to push the horror aspects a little bit. You want it to be um, not cheesy, but you want it to definitely be on on brand, so to speak. You want it to feel like a horror book. And I'm just pulling these in so that all of those black lines between them touch a little bit. And sometimes not too much. Oops. There we go. So I'm going to group that together. Now, it's always with creaky doors. It's always difficult as to like where to put it. I mean, your your the hinges are off panel. Um, the door is basically opening by itself, and it's opening outward, uh, which is sort of a, a horror aspect that you might miss if you were reading it. But she's knocking on it. The door opens outward, and nobody's there. So that's something that's sort of cool about the book that you don't normally notice now, or you might not normally notice. Now, this is a very tall, skinny panel, and we've got a very sort of wide sound effect. Um, so we might actually have too much in here. And I think I'm going to sacrifice a couple of these. And also when you do that, it allows you to make the sound effect a little bigger. Um, the question is which comes first, the sound or the visual? I think we need it at the top. Sometimes you have to think about what looks best or what feels best, and in this case it feels best for it to be up top because it's um, because you're more likely to sort of react to it by hearing it than by seeing the door. So I just grabbed all those and then I'm going to grab the ones behind him and group them separately. So now all the yellows are grouped and all the blacks are grouped. And I'm going to change that stroke just to, uh, oh, you know what, let me just do this. Yeah. So the, the strokes are three different, sort of applied three different ways. Uh, this one is applied to the inside of the shape. Uh, this one is applied to the line, the actual center line of the shape. And then this one is applied to the outside. And they, they all have different uses, but that's what I'm going to roll with here. <clears throat> and I wonder if I want to... It's tricky when you have these dark reds because there's a lot of black in them. Or there's not any black in it, surprisingly. Um, but it feels like there's a lot of black in it. So let's pull out the blue. Pull it down to 10%. Let's pull the red back. It's very orange. I think it sort of fits with the color scheme, but still. It's a little better. And you want it to, like the yellow is a little innocuous and a little unpunchy. Um, so I think the orange might be better there. But anyway, that's uh, that's a page from Infernoct. Um, you'll be able to check that out from Scout Comics sometime next year in 2017. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel or email me at howtolettercomics at gmail.com. Thanks a lot.